What's shaking, BookTube? My name's Cam, and welcome back to another video. So Christmas is over, but we're not quite in the new year just yet. Nevertheless, the buble has been put back in the cage until next Christmas. <coughs> and you know, 2019 came with its normal hefty load of disappointments. No doubt. <laughs> But the most appropriate of those disappointments to talk about in a video would probably be the shitty books that I read this year. Ultimately, I want to see if my feelings have changed because I did my reviews for these books pretty much immediately after reading them. So maybe after sitting with them for a while, maybe I feel a bit differently. Now, before you assume I'm just a cynical dingleberry, I have done a video on my favorite reads of 2019. That was the last video I did. But also I am a cynical dingleberry, so just... Buckle up, buckaroos! The first disappointing read I want to mention for 2019 was perhaps the one that I had the highest hopes for, and that was Black Leopard, Red Wolf by Marlon James. I don't blame Marlon for the marketing for the book, which was, I mean, effective, but pretty wrong. They were saying it was like the next uh, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones type thing, but I just think that part of the marketing was a bit of a cop-out. Don't get me wrong, I, I don't have a problem uh, with in marketing when they compare it to a popular franchise or something like that. I know a lot of people do, and I know a lot of people say it should be able to stand on its own, that kind of thing, and they're right, of course, but but I don't think that's an inherently bad thing to do when you're marketing something, to, to compare it to something that people will immediately recognize. But the only time you should be able to get away with that is if it's accurate. I find the point out some of the biggest reasons that this book is in this video rather than my favorites of 2019, it would come down to these things. The anti-chronological like formatting of the story was just extremely confusing and lost me pretty much at every turn. It's very hard to enjoy a story when you have no fucking idea what's going on. A lot of the characters in the story were either over-explained or under-explained. We either got too much or too little backstory for them, and a lot of the characters would pop in and out of the story just for seemingly no reason whatsoever. The motivations for the quest felt pretty much non-existent. I, I really couldn't bring myself to grow any attachment to them because I didn't believe that they wanted to be doing what they apparently were doing in the story. But the worst part of, of this whole book, the part that just, it kind of, like I get it, liking things is subjective, but one of the main things that kind of boggles me as to how this book still got as popular as it did is just how, like, gross it is, like, unnecessarily gross. I want to make it very, very clear. I am 100% fine with exploring, like, dark and uncomfortable themes in books, especially books like this, like fantasy, where... It's no holds barred. Like, this book takes off pretty much every trigger warning you could ever imagine for any story, and that itself doesn't bother me. That's fine. But the problem is, like, most of that, like, edgy, triggering stuff serves no no purpose whatsoever to the actual story or the characters or the plot. It's just, it's just there, and it's just hard to read through, and once you read through it, you're like, like, why? Like, why did I have to read that? What was the point? Why? 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 It's like a super common thing in this book for whatever reason for like characters to be introduced while they're in the middle of raping someone and that someone is usually a child and it, it just happens a lot. A, a suspiciously large amount. Ultimately, when it comes to this book, what I would say is just that I think it is way, way overhyped. I don't think it came even close to breaking in any kind of new ceiling in the fantasy genre or storytelling whatsoever. Most of my time reading this was spent like, oh geez, another kid just entered the scene. I hope this doesn't... Oh God, again? Why? Next up is S.E. Hinton's classic, the Outsiders. I rated this one two stars. I know a lot of people like hold this book really, really closely to their hearts, but I'll, I'll boil my negative opinion of this book down to one thing, and that's just that I think if you stripped away the greaser aesthetic from all of this, like the glamorous greaser aesthetic, there's nothing really that profound happening here, man. Like, it's just, this book is like the epitome of it's not that deep. Don't get me wrong, I dig greasers. I'm a Kinnicky man myself. And it wasn't even necessarily a bad story, I just think the fact that this book is, like, put on such a pedestal of, you know, virtue and allegory, I, I don't know if it's well-earned. I think if they were just normal-looking towny kids, 
I, I don't think people would care as much, to be honest. I don't think many people would remember this book. So the next one, I know I said that Black Leopard Red Wolf was overhyped, but this one, uh, this one is definitely one of the most overhyped books I've ever seen. And that would be Daisy Jones and the Six. Again, bullet pointing my like issues with this book is going to be pretty difficult. So if you want to see my full opinion on this, you can watch the video. But like The Outsiders, I feel like this book is only loved as much as it is because of the aesthetic or the glamour of the period it's set in. Daisy Jones and the Six, holy shit, it rides the hell out of the coattails of like rock and roll lifestyle and glamour without actually doing any exploration whatsoever of the culture itself. So Daisy Jones is basically a bunch of rock stars being interviewed and reflecting on their life in the time of a band which is very, very blatantly meant to be... Uh, look, I'm willing to call it a, a tribute or a homage to Fleetwood Mac. That's basically what it is. It's like reading the story of Fleetwood Mac, except much worse. A lot of the problems I had were just that the characters were unlikable, and I know in most cases they were meant to be because of what was going on, but I think even in moments where they were meant to be likable, I still didn't like them and I thought they came off as just obnoxious. The rock and roll time period that it was, like, uh, what is it, the 70s, was used for nothing more than aesthetic. There was actually no diving into the culture of the time, which is the only reason I was excited to read this in the first place, because there is so much rich value in what was a problematic lifestyle of, you know, the 70s. Reading band stories from back then is so fascinating because of the social norms that were romanticized at the time. It's, it's insane to look back on through the eyes of someone who was famous. Even upon finishing the book, I'm still not sure there was any actual character development for any of the characters. In my book review, I point out uh, the, the whole, just as an example, the relationship between the brothers within the band that I think are kind of based on uh, Eagles, you know, band the Eagles. But you have these brothers within the band and they have this relationship that has its highs and lows through the story and it builds up towards a climax at the end of the book and then just pff, nothing happens. Just Nothing happens, man. I just remember reading, like, that the resolution. I was like, what? But another one of my biggest problems with this story is, how the hell do you write a story that is based around drugs and addiction and still have it mean nothing and go nowhere? The thing with the two main characters, you know, what is it, uh, Billy and Daisy, is that Billy is a former alcoholic who still struggles with temptation and his past addiction, and Daisy is a beautiful drug addict, and addiction and temptation is Billy's whole thing, and, and that's great, because that temptation for Billy isn't just about the temptation of alcohol and drugs and his past lifestyle, especially when his band's exploding and fame and those things are being kind of presented to him much more frequently, it's also the temptation of falling for someone when he's happily married, and the person that he's falling for happens to be a drug addict, which again circles back to his past Drug it's a whole thing. And then you have Daisy, who is a drug addict, and her thing through the story is, you know, is she going to overcome it so she can become a better person to a band and start respecting herself more and stop being uh, so self-destructive? And that goes nowhere. Nothing nothing happens there. There's a scene where she, where it seems like she might go to rehab, but that's literally negated on the next page. So I guess that whole thing was just useless. The story circles around drugs and addiction and temptation, but at no point do we find out, uh, you know, what the real root cause of that is for, for Daisy. It's just, she's just, she just likes drugs because that's her character, because that's who she is, because it's cool and it's rock and roll, man. That's just rock and roll, man. Duh. Like I said, I just don't get how you write a whole book about addiction and temptation and have it go absolutely nowhere. So the next one is called, and it has a pretty long title, <laughs> Bear with me. It's called, I'm a therapist and my patient is going to be the next school shooter. Six patient files that will keep you up at night. God, this one sucked. I gave it one star. It was just, I don't like just being mean when I review stuff, but God, this book was trash. It was just real bad. It's easily one of the most incoherent, like inconsistent reads I've had all year. And the thing is, it's posed like an anthology. So you read that title, you know, six patient files that will keep you up at night. And you're like, okay, it's an anthology, but it's not. It's it's literally just one story divided up for 
seemingly no reason, really. And it's just the world's worst uh, therapist continuously breaking the law on a whim because of any slight suspicion he could ever have. Like, my whole idea when I went into this is that it would be six completely separate fictional therapy appointments where we get to dive into the psyche of, like, people who are genuinely dangerous. That's what I thought it would be. I thought that would be kind of interesting to read about. And I didn't even have a problem with the fact that the person who wrote it isn't a real doctor. I just assumed they would have done their research, and that's okay. But this book isn't a story about the patients. It's 100% about the therapist. The patients are, are, like, basically props. At most, trivial side characters. And it turns into this whole weird, like, bad Sherlock Holmes fan fiction where the therapist is solving a mystery and all the patients are linked together and it's just really dumb. <laughs> it's just, it's really, it's really dumb. His biggest problem is that he jumps to conclusions like nobody's business. During this mystery, he'll get a, a clue, which isn't a clue and it's, it's obviously not a clue. And he's like, I've solved the case. And this happens like 10 times through the book. And it always ends badly, and then he's like, oh, I was wrong. But I'm still smart, and I can still figure this out. At one point, he immediately suspects his assistant of being the bad guy for almost no reason, just on the flimsiest bit of evidence I've ever seen, and fucking socks the guy in the mouth. <laughs> he literally punches his assistant, and the assistant's just like, oh, that's all right, man. Shit happens. Oh my god. You're wearing black pants. Criminals wear black pants. Hiya! So yeah, those are the books that made me uh, punch dance my rage away this year. Those, those are the ones that really got under my skin. I appreciate the experience of coming across bad reads because that just makes me appreciate the good ones even more. No regrets, as they would say. And hey, I hope you have a great New Year's. I hope you get a... I hope you get a smooch. As always, thanks for watching. Catch ya. She's got class and style. Knowledge by the pounds, yeah. Baby, never act wild. Very low key on the profile. Catching feelings is it all. Let me show you how it goes. Love's the worst, fears the best.